So last week I decided to do something a little crazy and see how much potassium I could really supplement in one day without having a problem. And my usual is 2,000 milligrams of potassium daily. I take 1,000 in the morning and then 1,000 in the afternoon, and then that's in addition to whatever potassium I'm getting from my diet. But I wanted to see what happens if I go to 3,000 or even 4,000 milligrams, what happens to my body, and most importantly, what happens to my body chemistry, my blood levels of potassium, what's going to happen when I get to these escalating doses that are far above and beyond what most people get in a day. I've done 3,000 milligrams of potassium supplementation today, and we're about to find out if it raises my blood potassium levels. What do you think, Perla? I don't know. All right. All right. Well, we'll see. Now, I can tell you it wasn't easy. I've got the scars to prove it, plenty of blood draws, and now I'm on a first name basis with Quest Diagnostics. But the reason why I did it was because I think potassium supplementation is probably the single most important thing you can do to ensure healthy aging. The reality is, is that potassium is the most important mineral in our diet. It is the most abundant mineral in the human body, and most of us are deficient. Only 1 in 50 people gets enough potassium to replenish your body stores in your cells and in your organs and to achieve the best health outcomes. But the reason I did this video was because a lot of people are under the misconception that potassium is actually dangerous. Now, when I talk to my doctor colleagues, they oftentimes are under this same misconception that they feel like Recommending potassium to their patients is actually going to cause negative health outcomes when the opposite is true. And in the comments and in talking to lay people, I've often heard it's going to cause a heart attack. It's going to cause a cardiac arrhythmia and uh, you're going to die if you take too much potassium, which really isn't borne out by the research. And it's one thing for me to point you in the direction of the research, but it's another thing to put my own body to the test kind of put my money where my mouth is, so to speak. So let's dig into the research, and then I'm going to show you what happened with my own individual study. So let's start with this analysis of 23 trials, including about 1,200 patients. The authors found that there was a modest but significant reduction in blood pressure of 9 points systolic, 6 points on the diastolic. Now, you know, me as a physician, you know, that doesn't sound modest. That sounds pretty significant. It's actually on par with most prescription medications that are used for first-line treatment of hypertension. I'll leave a link down below so you can compare the data yourself. But they also found that it had a very good safety profile. So when we look at that, there's only a very small number of patients that had mild side effects, most of which were gastrointestinal. We'll cover that again later in this video as I talk about how you can avoid those when you're supplementing potassium for yourself. But suffice to say that across these 1,200 patients, potassium was safe, effective, and very well tolerated. Now, since we're talking about my own blood levels of potassium after taking the supplement, I wanted to show you this trial where the investigators looked at exactly the same thing. In this case, the trial involved fasting overnight and then taking a dose of 1,600 milligrams of potassium and then following blood levels for several hours after that. And what these investigators found was that from a baseline of about 4.0, which is right in the middle of the range, the blood levels increased by only a fraction of a point up to about 4.6, 4.7 before coming back down to baseline over the course of four hours. So even a dose, an individual dose of 1,600 milligrams did not appreciably move the potassium levels in the blood, and they came back to baseline in just a couple of hours. So it looks like based on all this research that potassium is probably pretty safe if you're taking up to 1,600 milligrams in one dose or if you're taking up to two or 3,000 milligrams in divided doses throughout the day. But what happened when I took it for myself? Well, to give you some perspective, I went back a couple of years, and during a routine physical, my potassium level was 4.8 two years ago. Last year, it was down to 3.9. Now, these were baseline readings during random physicals, so I don't remember how much potassium I was having on those days or the preceding weeks, but both of those were well within the normal range of 3.5 to about 5.3. So I mentioned earlier that my typical intake of potassium is around 2,000 milligrams of supplement daily. I take one of these 1,000 milligram packets in the morning, and then I take another in the afternoon, mix it with some water, and it basically allows me to turn my liter of water into an alkaline water with a healthy dose of potassium. So when I'm hydrating during the day, 
I'm just getting that extra potassium, you know, in the context of my normal hydration. So 2000 is my norm. And when I went to the lab on day one, I was having that 2000 milligrams and my readings came back at 4.3, kind of in the middle of the range of normal and nothing too so spectacular. So now I know that my daily 2000 milligrams on top of my diet is leaving me safely in the normal range. Definitely not going to run the risk of any of these bad side effects that people are concerned about. But what about the 3000? Well, the next day I just added an extra dose and I had it about an hour before I went to the lab. So as I got to the lab, I had done my one in the morning, one at lunch, and then one on my way to the lab. And as you can see, my numbers actually decreased. Now, I don't think that this is statistically significant, but I went from 4.3 to 4.2. So definitely not going through the roof. And I mentioned before, this is only about an hour or two after that dose. So this was kind of probably on the high side for the day. But again, safely in the normal range, no risk of anything bad happening. Now, what about on day three? On day three, I took a thousand milligrams of potassium in the morning, one of these packets. Then I mixed two packets with my water over lunch, and then I had a fourth packet on the way to the lab. So now I've got 4,000 milligrams of potassium plus whatever I'm getting from the diet. You know, realistically, I'm talking maybe six, 7,000 milligrams of potassium in that day. And look at this. My blood levels continue to go down. I mean, it's crazy. So I went from 4.3 to 4.2. Now I'm at 4.1. I mean, you talk about your body being able to tolerate potassium. This is real evidence that a healthy body with healthy kidneys, and this is important, I'm going to get back to it in a minute, but your kidneys are designed to filter out that potassium. So I had up to 4,000 milligrams of potassium. I felt amazing. I had plenty of energy, wasn't stressed, went to the lab, and I saw my blood level stay essentially flat throughout the course of this experiment. So hopefully this gives you some uh, added confidence that if you're thinking about going beyond that measly 99 milligrams of potassium that most supplements offer, that if you have healthy kidneys and you're otherwise in good shape, that this should not be a problem and you can achieve all of these benefits in terms of supporting healthy blood pressure, reducing your risk of unhealthy aging, that stroke, that heart attack, that heart disease, kidney disease, and maybe you start to feel more amazing because your body's now getting enough of what is essentially the most important mineral in the human diet. So you may be asking yourself, how is it that we can increase our amount of dietary potassium so dramatically and yet see like zero impact on our blood levels, right? Where is all this potassium going? And in order to understand it, you got to see where potassium actually is in the body. And most of it is inside the cells. Almost all of the potassium in the body is actually sequestered inside the cells. So when you drink potassium, it goes circulates it gets into your intestinal tract it gets absorbed very rapidly into the circulatory system it then flows throughout the body and is immediately brought into the cells so it nourishes the cells in your organs in your muscles and your bones before it goes back to the kidney where it is filtered and excreted and when it hits the kidney it's actually triggering two mechanisms that lower your blood pressure one is it downregulates renin and the other is it turns off the sodium chloride co-transporter. Now, both of these mechanisms are what are targeted by most of the prescription drugs for hypertension. So potassium is actually doing that same work that the drugs would. And once the potassium hits those signals and then it goes and gets filtered out, you just urinate it out and it's gone out of your system. So your blood levels stay very static the whole time because the potassium is going into your cells or getting filtered out the body and along the way signaling that, yes, you've got enough potassium, we can downregulate some of these other mechanisms like renin and the sodium chloride co-transporter, allowing your body to normalize blood pressure and function normally. It's why I think blood pressure is possibly misunderstood and we should be really thinking of it as a symptom of potassium deficiency rather than a disease that's associated with age or genetics or any of this other stuff that people will tell you. Now, that brings us to two special populations. Now, when I think about my own experience and I look at these studies, what we're generally looking at are people who are not taking a bunch of medications and have healthy kidneys. So for me, I'm not taking any drugs that interfere with the metabolism of potassium. And like I say, a lot of the blood pressure medications do. Also, I have healthy kidneys. When we look at kidney function, you're looking at mainly two different metrics. One is the BUN um, and the other is the creatinine. And those two measures are what 
tells us physicians how well your kidney is functioning. And then we do a little math problem. We come up with the estimated glomerular filtration rate, which is the actual quantitative amount of how much, how well your kidney is actually functioning to filter out toxins and potassium from the body. So if you're taking medications that interfere with potassium metabolism, don't worry. I'm going to do a video on that particular case very soon. And I think you're going to be surprised by what you find out. Also, I'm going to talk about the patients with kidney disease. And, you know, depending on how much kidney function you have, potassium might be what you need in order to actually help support and improve kidney function. So it may be that in these two situations, you still want to consider having potassium, but I want to get into that in more detail in future videos. And then the last thing I want to cover in this video is the side effects of potassium supplementation. And as I mentioned, they're safe and well tolerated, but when we look at the low incidence of side effects, it's often to do with the gastrointestinal tract. We get nausea, stomach upset, diarrhea, gas, and these are things that you don't want, but they're very low probability events. And there are ways that you can manage those. Number one is you can steer clear of taking a lot of any one particular potassium salt. So you've got gluconate and citrate and chloride and more out there. And when we take high doses, it can upset your body's metabolism, your pH balance, and importantly, the way your gastrointestinal tract reacts to all of those extra anions that are associated with the potassium. And the other thing you can do is start slow and work your way up on your potassium intake. Your gastrointestinal tract often needs to adjust to the amount of potassium that you're delivering. And I've seen time and time again where if somebody has some of those uncomfortable side effects, it's very easy to manage. We just cut back for a couple of days, maybe divide the dose and split it up instead of taking 1,000 milligrams at once, do 500 and then 500 a few hours later. But you can divide up those doses, slow it down a little bit, give your body time to adapt, and then escalate as you need to in order to close the gap between whatever you're getting from diet and that 4,700 to 5,000 milligrams daily that experts recommend. So I hope this video has given you some added confidence when it comes to supplementing potassium for your own health and giving you some guidance on how you can reach the levels of potassium intake, that 4,700 to 5,000 milligrams daily that are associated with the best health outcomes without having a lot of those side effects and knowing that you're actually making your heart healthier and you're not at risk of some of these scary things that people talk about on the interweb.